Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Against the Grain where father and son talk faith and footy. I'm your host, Father Ben, a Catholic priest for the Archdiocese of Sydney, joined today again by my spiritual son, Anthony. Ahoy. <laughs> Ahoy, g'day. <laughs> Good to see you. And very, very special guest today, Oshe Ole. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect pronunciation. <laughs> Samoan pronunciation. Eh? Josh, <laughs> Josh Ole from the Manly Seagulls, Samoan International. Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks for being oh, here with thank us. Thank you. No, it's been a nice morning catching up, man. Pre-podcast, it's made me really excited. Um, Wonderful. We're going to have some good stuff to talk about, eh? Um, we open will. Up, yeah. We will. So, for those of you that missed the uh, the pre-show uh, prep, <laughs> we had manush, which is like a zata pizza. Mm. Uh, we had some coffees. We were just kicking it back and just really enjoying ourselves, getting to know one another, talking the faith. Mm. Um, and Josh, you've got a lot to say about your life. And mm. I think the reason Anthony and I... <laughs> Um, consider it an honour that you're on our show is that what this show is all about is looking at the whole person um, and the, the the reason for this show and its development was we want to talk about faith and sport but we want to give players a platform where they can talk about what they love yeah. and we can talk about you, your love for faith, your love for family, your love for football Yeah. and so you're a perfect fit on this show, mate. You're very welcome. No, looking forward to it. Very welcome. Very welcome. So before we get into the guts of this show, we have a very, very special announcement to make. Yes, we do. We have a very special announcement to make. Anthony is wearing our brand new Against the Grain t-shirt, the ATG <laughs> t-shirt, and we... A ATG, just to be clear. ATG. <laughs> I've claimed. Yes. I'm stealing off And Josh is stealing after it. After the podcast. Josh loves it, so Josh is going to wear it. So this is what we're going to do. We're across a number of platforms. I've been told by my marketing team that we're not on MSN Messenger or MySpace <laughs> and carrier pigeons are going to cause an issue with the RSPCA. <laughs> so we're not going to do any of that. We're not going to do any of that. But what we will do across TikTok, Instagram and YouTube, we want you to like, subscribe, follow and comment. And whoever gives us the most profound heartwarming, life-changing comment based over any episode or clip you've seen over the last month. Anthony and I will pick out that person. So one person from TikTok, one person from YouTube, one person from Instagram. We don't discriminate. Here. We don't discriminate and we will send you a T-shirt. So like, subscribe, follow, comment. And today for the very first time, I can also announce that our beautiful... Um, uh, socials manager Sarah will be translating this show in Morse code. <laughs> so we are reaching absolutely everybody. She was just saying to me, she thought you were going to say you're giving her a pay rise. No, oh, none of that. Oh, yeah. None of that. Okay. None of that. No, but no. we don't do that. Entire here. show <laughs> in Morse code. We're we're reaching people we would have never have reached 400 years ago. Anyway, <laughs> so we're doing all of this today. We want you to like, subscribe, comment. And we're going to get into the show now, but I'll make that announcement at the end of the show again. But I think it's exciting. We want, we know that this show is touching people's hearts and minds. Thanks be to God. We're, we're spreading. We're, we're all over the beautiful interweb, the beautiful <laughs> internet people at home. <laughs> You're lapping it up and continue to support this channel because we're talking about the two greatest things in the world, faith and football. Okay. Faith first. <laughs> faith first, of course. So, Josh, again, welcome. We want to talk to you as a man. Okay, because um, a lot of the time, sporting athletes, especially at the highest level, only get looked at for their particular sports ability. Yeah. And behind all of that is a man that loves God, that loves his family. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. But before we get into your history and your upbringing, you've just come off a shoulder reconstruction. Yeah, yeah. So talk to us about how that's been and how the recovery's been. It's been rough, actually. I had a um, double shoulder reconstruction on this side. So I had to reconstruct my AC joint and um, my shoulder as a whole. Um, so I had I had a few niggles throughout the year with it, and it just progressively got worse to the point where I had to get it operated on. Um, I'm about eight weeks post-op, I think. Um, I've probably got another three or so months of rehab in front of me. Um, it's, it's going okay, though, you know. Uh, it's been... The good thing is uh, sometimes life's so hectic, um, it's forced me to rest, it's forced me to chill out and slow down and 
made the most of the time with my family and got two little boys at home. Amazing. Um, so I've been able to hang out with my wife and my two little ones a lot more. Um, so that's that's been the upside. Awesome. And so when you come off a very serious um, operation like that, it is a long and arduous journey mm. now in recovery. So I suppose there's a lot of discipline involved with that, a lot of physio, a lot of rehab work. Um, for people like Anthony and myself who are very far from being professional athletes, <laughs> talk us through what it's like being at that upper level and the type of care the club gives to you and to what they ask you to do in your recovery efforts. Yeah, they're great. So um, they, they got us to stay on for an extra month at the club um, to kind of get on top of the rehab and things like that before going away on our break. So um, so I've done that. Uh, they give you schedules and, and apps and things on your phone to to update your exercises to stay on top of it. So so most days I've got to do um, shoulder exercises and things to try and um, get it back to strength. And then the other stuff around discipline is obviously diet, and, and I'm Samoan, so <laughs> I need to stay on top of it, that, that's for sure. Um, you know, if I, if I don't stay on top of it, I get pretty sloppy in the off-season. So, um, yeah, w good balance between um, having, a, having time off and, and having fun and letting your hair down a little bit, but then also... Like having, still having schedule, still training. Um, I need to train anyway, just for my mental health. I feel better when I'm training anyway. Um, so keeping balance, but also you know it's um, it's a long hard year, so I do need to get away from football. Yeah, very good. And you do know that what Anthony and I have been doing on this show each week, specifically, has been praying for players that have been injured and that are coming through rehab. So you've been in our prayers in a very special way. And we hope that the, the recovery is a smooth one. But there are many blessings even in hardships. Because as you said, it's forced you to press pause and you've been able to spend time with family. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, even you mentioned me you mentioned to me when we were talking, you know, you've been praying for me and my injury. And things are going really well, actually. I'm ahead of schedule and things like that. So um, thank you. Appreciate um, your guys' prayers and support. And I'm actually really just happy to be here, really happy to have like-minded people and, and just be able to freely chat. Good man, good man. Yeah, it's been, and it's been so refreshing, yeah, like, yeah. you know, having having a chat with you bef before yeah. and, man, your, your willingness to just talk about um, whatever, uh, as long as it glorifies God, it's yeah. man, it's an inspiration for me even. So thank you for that. Um, I, I just wanted to ask as well, what's, what's sort of the mental side like? Because with, like you said, you had a double um, mm. reconstruction. Yep. Can that be? Can that be a little bit tough? Like, do you start to question yourself or anything? Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you do. Like, I've had um, so like the last four or five off seasons, I've had to have surgery to get things fixed up to get ready for the next year. Like, it can get really frustrating. Um, you're right. You do question it sometimes. I question like, man, how much, how much more have I got left? And then once it heals and you're going again, you know, it's it's okay. But yeah, the mental side of it, it, it is very difficult. You know, not being able to like shower yourself, like little stuff like that, not being yeah. able to pick up your your kids for, for, for months or um, just do normal things. Like uh, There's a lot of things that people don't see, the, 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 side of, the side of recovery and rehab and, you know, waking up in that hospital bed and, and pain and there's no one there in that, in that recovery room. Um, those parts can be really difficult. Um, but uh, I do have someone that I can rely on. I have a couple of people that I can rely on that are rock solid, Jesus first, and then um, great family and friends. So um, that's real important for me. Amen, amen. That's awesome, man. And and like you mentioned at the end there, always keeping your faith solid, even in those times. I'm sure that's uh, that's your biggest help, which is great. Um, all right. Well, let's get into a little bit of who Josh Aloe is, or Oshe Ole. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give the His people at home a bit of a background on what that joke was all about? Oh, yeah, sure. Do, do you want to do that yourself? You or? can do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, it was, I believe, the 2021 Dally M, um, Dally M Awards, and it was Peter Valandis who was calling out, like, the points, and it got to, jo got to Josh, and I don't know what, <laughs> what happened, <laughs> but he's just looked down at his card and just pronounced his name, Oshe Ole. <laughs> One vote. Oshay Ole. I think he tried to merge all my three names and he, just, <laughs> he got tongue twisted on all of them. That it was funny. And then there were some really funny memes and things that came out. And I think he felt bad and he rang me up and he was like, Josh, I'm so sorry. I was like, oh, yeah. relax. It's all good. Like, I'm not taking it to heart. Like, it was, oh, what a it was great pretty support. funny. I, I appreciate some of the funny memes, actually. They're pretty good. 
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, what a good sport. What a good sport. <laughs> um, yeah, but we, we do want to know who, who Josh Alloyer is, the, the person. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your upbringing? You yep. were born in New Zealand, I believe, is that right? Yeah, yeah. so I was born in New Zealand. I uh, grew up in, in West Auckland. Um, incredibly close with my siblings. Uh, grew up, uh, grew up in, a, in a loving household, a Christian household. Um, I must say, like, I definitely didn't have... Um, my own relationship with Christ for for a long time, but I grew up with um, Christian principles, um, parents that that drove old school uh, traditional values. I would say, um, yeah, I lost my dad in my teens. I would say that's probably been the whole turning point for my life. Like I lost I lost my dad in my teens. He was a he was a strong man of faith, and um, as our God does, you know, like during my during my lowest, he come in and kind of swooped me in and he became a father to the fatherless like it says in Psalms uh, that's a verse that I've held on to um, my whole life actually um, someone gave that to me um, during like I was obviously going through a lot of trauma uh, losing my dad and someone came up to me and he said like I, I felt a word for you he didn't know what I was going through at the time and he gave me that verse like God is a father to the fatherless and defender of widows oh, wow. I think it's Psalm 68.5 if I'm wrong, we'll edit it out. <laughs> but um, anyway, he gave me the verse, and and um, since then, I I just said like, you know what, like God's got me here, you know, and that's where that's where my faith journey began. And as you know, like fighting the good fight is is not easy. Yeah. In a fight, sure. you lose rounds, you fall, you get back up. That's right. Yeah. You miss the mark um, at at times. That um, just staying in the fight is the main thing. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. And. To be honest with you, man, I, I can share in that experience because I also I lost my dad when I was sixteen. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, it, w- it was just as tough a time. I'd been practicing my faith for a few years yep. um, at that point, but even even when you go through something that tough, mm. like, like I can completely understand. You know, it's 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 hard to get through. Um, so, to be honest, my faith is what what kept me going through it yeah, and still keeps me going. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Um, I, I can't imagine how tough it would be for someone without that faith. Mm. But um, but yeah, I can definitely share that, share um, in that experience with you, man. Um, and then, okay, so you've grown up um, in a in a faithful family, not so much a, a faith, a fa- or a personal relationship with God until it took me that time. Moment. Yeah, yeah, it took me time. Yeah, I'd say yeah. it definitely just took me time. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, beautiful. And then and and we'll get to a lot, a lot more faith <laughs> as yep, the yep, podcast yep, goes yep. on. Um, and then you you you've played your junior footy yep. um, at Glenora Bears, is that right? Yeah, yeah, which is just a small club in West Auckland. Yeah. Beautiful. What Beautiful. age was that? Oh, I started playing. I think I, I just started playing with one of my cousins or school friends at you know um, eight or nine or something like that, and you know I just really liked it. And then um, kind of how it transpired is is when when I had that moment with God, um, not long after losing my dad, like. Kind of, uh, uh, my prayer to God was like, if you really want me to do this, please open doors for me. And with you at the helm, like I'm ready to take it on. Like if this what if this is what you want for me, then uh, let's rock and roll, and I'll put you first. And um, it was crazy. And then um, you know, I made a couple rep teams, and um, and then I got a contract to come over to Australia. So it was crazy the way God opened doors during that time. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the way it all happened was just it was just like so evident that it was God, like a small place in West Auckland, um, a scout and a, a manager just happened to come to one of our rep games, happened to like me, um, happened to give me a contract to come over to Australia. Like you could say, like lucky if you, if you wanted to, but <laughs> no, it wasn't luck. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And at what point do you start to develop that self belief that? you might have what it takes to play at the highest level of the game. Yeah, it's funny because um, I think a lot of athletes could probably um, relate to this, but like you can have so much belief and also so much doubt at the same time. Mm. And like especially like, um, you know, I'm, I'm an extremist. If I do something, I want to do it properly. I want to do it well and I want to do it. I want to be the best at it. So that, that comes with a lot of doubt, a lot of questioning whether you're good enough. Um, so I, I'd say wh- when I got that, that first contract and I knew that, you know, in a couple of years I was moving to Australia on, on a football contract, I was thinking, you know, what, with, with God at my side, 
Like, I think I can really do this. Like, all the odds are stacked against me, really. But um, I really believe this is what God's got for me. Mm. Um, but then it was also important for me to say to him, like, oh, God, like, I'm not worshipping you just so you can give me my dream. You know, give me my NRL career. Like, mm. I love you either way. And, like, I, I, I would say that to him, like, um, you know, if it's not for me, I'm not just serving you just for that. Like, if it's not NRL you want me to be in, then that that's okay. Mm. Like, but... I did have that that assurity in my, in my in my heart and in my spirit that I think that's where God's leading me. Yeah, and man, I pinch myself today. Amazing. Like I look at like my family, my home, my career, and I'm like, I'm actually here. Like yeah, I pinch myself. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And it's such a big move, isn't it? From from New Zealand yeah. coming to Australia for a football contract. Yeah. Did Did you move with family or? No, I moved by myself, and I I, I was young. I was like sixteen or seventeen or something, and I've um, never been away from home. Like, I didn't have my mom. My brothers are probably the closest people to me in the world, my two older brothers, um, as well as, like, my group of friends who I've had for 15 odd years. I've still got the same group of friends. Um, yeah, that was hard. I had to learn how to grow up real quick. Um, didn't have mum there to do my washing, to do my <laughs> cooking, to, you know, like, I was, I was eating mint and rice for ages. That's all I knew how to cook, eh? So, like, um, yeah, it was, a, it, was a really, it was a reality check, but it was really difficult. Like, I was really sick for the first few years um there were so many times i wanted to like throw in the towel but um during that time i spent so much time in prayer i spent so much time in his word and like i, I have to say like he's he's the one that sustained me through that part yeah Amazing. and still does Amazing. Yeah. and who was the first contract with so i was at Parramatta eels they're, they're they're the club that brought me over um that was really good for for that time like god sent me there for that season um, I played there for a couple of years. I played um, like SG Ball, which was under 18s at the time. Then I played under 20s. I uh, played in the Junior Kiwis at that time, made that team. Um, played a bit of New South Wales Cup there as a kid, 18-19, uh, which was a good experience for me. And then um, as things panned out with injuries and uh, Parramatta was pretty keen to get rid of me um, and Tigers were, wanted to pick me up and Moved over there and pl ended up playing quite a bit of first grade at, at the Tigers to, to kick off my NRL career. Amazing. Yeah. Who did you support growing up? Honestly, I didn't watch a ton of football. Oh, so, no like, way. um, <laughs> at, at home, you have to pay for, like, Foxtel or Sky. Yeah. And we didn't have that. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I didn't really Fair watch enough. football. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my family were, like, were more boxing background. My two brothers boxed. Um, my my brother-in-law at home, he, he's a Golden Gloves champion in New Zealand at the moment. Yeah. Um, we're we're big on boxing, so um, grew up in a boxing family. We're always around the boxing club, so um, that kind of like a, um, I was either training football or on the days off, I was I was um, helping my brothers get ready for fights or nice. um, we're at the boxing club. Yeah. You had a fight yourself, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I've had a few fights and things. Yeah, few fights. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah but um, <laughs> I've had one in Australia. I've had one in Australia. It's been pretty hard. Like I was saying, the last three or four off seasons, I've had yeah. surgery, so it's been difficult. I want to get active when I can, but um, we'll just see what happens. Cool, cool. Now, playing at the highest level, does the club put a restriction on you for something like boxing? Uh, um, for, to play other sports at risk of injury or concussion or whatever it might be? Mm. Um, are you allowed to just openly chance your hand at other sports? Or Oh, it's definitely a conversation, eh? You've yep. got to have a conversation with your, um, with your coach, with your CEO and things like that and get clearance. Because mm. like, first and foremost, we're, we're footballers, right? That's what... Um, that's the most important thing. That's what's putting a roof and providing for our family. Yeah. So, now that's a conversation, yeah. So, when I was supposed to fight Paul Gallen a couple of years ago, um, before I got COVID, um, yeah, I had to talk to my coach, Desi, and things like that and get them to sign off on it, yeah. Now, when you can don the, the colours of the country yeah. um, that you grew up in, that you were born in with such a rich heritage and culture... What does that feel like the first time you get called up to represent your country? Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, as I shared, like, I, I lost my dad and, and my teens. And I'll uh, get in the call, I think it was 2017, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, to represent Sa uh, Samoa, man. Like, unbelievable feeling. Um, the bus ride on the way there um, to the ground, very emotional, and then re uh, singing the national anthem. Oh, just the best feeling in the world. That's where my heart is, is representing um, Samoa. And been able to do it on a number of occasions and able to do it at the, at the World Cup as well. Um, so, 
yeah, that's that's another a real blessing too. If, would you ever represent New Zealand or? <laughs> yeah, so like if I, if, I, if I'm totally honest, um, my preference is Samoa, regardless of of uh, money and things like that, um, because of my dad. Um, but if the time came where um, I didn't get picked for Samoa, and I got and Kiwis wanted me, then like I would also love to play for Kiwis. But um, I could understand if New Zealand not being my preference would rub them up the wrong way, and they wouldn't pick me for that reason. And and I totally understand that. So. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm sure they'll. I'm <laughs> sure they'd want you if you were available to. Them. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's cool. Well, well, we have the uh, the Pacific Championships mm. coming up. Yeah. I'm sure. Had you uh, been injury free, you would have mm. uh, loved to play play in that. Yeah. Um, we just want to get get your tips. So we've got the yep. Pacific um, the Pacific Championship. Uh, sorry, the Pacific Cup and the Pacific Bowl. Yep. So we've got. Australia, New Zealand, and Samoa in one group. Yep. Now I'm assuming Obviously we know your Samoa's pick, but win yeah, that. there we go. <laughs> there we, and that. they do have a strong side as well. So, will you be will you be helping out or anything or no? No, nah, no, nah, I won't be. No, no, nah, nah, they're, oh, they're fine. They've got it all covered. So, um, I'll be enough. just having time with my family. Nice, nice. Okay, and then we have um, the Pacific Bowl, Cook Islands, Fiji, and Papua New Guinea. Mm. Who are you going for there? So that's actually an interesting one. Um, I'll probably go Papua New Guinea. Um, Same. This they uh, they are rock solid, mate. Honestly, mm. like I, pl- I I played against Papua New Guinea uh, for Samoa at Leichhardt. One of the most physical games I've played. Like every time wow. you you tackle them, you have to be prepared to throw your shoulder at a concrete wall. They're just <laughs> made of bricks, mate. And like they um they hit so hard. They just they just got that toughness ingrained into them. The the PNG people. So. Yeah. Um, they're hard to go past. They're they're really good. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think they're they're pretty solid. Yeah. I think I think they'll get the win as well. Papua New Guinea. All right. There, there are the tips from from Josh <laughs> for the Pacific Championships. Um, okay. Then we have some a bit more footy. We've got um, so you obviously play in the forward pack. Yep. Uh, you can play anywhere in the forward pack, I believe. Second row, front Just row, no lock. Oh yeah, except <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe except no. you might. They might, Was you know, throw you a not as strong as it should uh, be. No. <laughs> no, they might. They might chuck you a, you know, Josh. Was it Josh Maguire? Oh, that's yeah, right. He was. Yeah, threw yeah, him and Hooker a bit, for a little yeah. bit for someone as well, which is anyway. <laughs> um, no, but what, what's your preferred position? Yeah, front row. I like playing in the front row. Yeah, awesome. er, early in my career, I played in the back row. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like I, I, I'm a toiler. Uh, like I like the, the toiling part of, of football. I like being in the middle. That's where it's direct. That's where it's the most physical. Um, and that's kind of like what what I build my game off is physicality, aggression. Um, I like the middle of the park. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, now um, Manly. You're playing with Manly. So I remember watching you make it... Um, your debut for the Tigers, and I thought, man, this guy's a solid player. And it was against Warriors, is that right? It was, yeah. Yeah, so against was. your home country. Memory, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, firstly, how was that? Well, that would have been a highlight. Yeah, it's obviously. ironic. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> ironic. It always happens like that, like the milestones and things. No, it was it was great. So uh, I debuted at Campbelltown Stadium, which is uh, I live five minutes from that stadium now, you know, mm. like um, oh, my family home. And, uh, yeah, against the Warriors too, obviously, uh, as a Kiwi, playing, for, playing against the Warriors. Uh, a lot of my family was able to come. A couple of my family members came over from New Zealand and I had all my close family and friends watching their, me debut. So that was that moment when I was like, man, God, you you came through for me, eh? Mm-hmm. And, like, it was never, like, I never kind of felt like, you know, I'd done it. Yeah. Um, I think David says, not to me, not to me, but to him be the glory. That's how I felt the whole way. I was like, that's that's all you. Like, that's really how I felt, yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. And it's also like John the Baptist says... I must decrease. It's yeah, strong about yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, I must decrease. I there yeah, we go. Yeah. yeah. So and, and, and must Christ must. Yeah. yeah. So, um, beautiful. And then, so you've yeah, uh, gone from Tigers to Manly. Yeah. You're there now. Mm-hmm. How are you finding it at Manly? No, I do love it. I do love it. It was a, it was a really good move. Um, it was timely as well. I always feel like God's just always had my back at the right times. He's moved me to and from different places uh, for my good and. No, I'm loving my football there. It's been really good. Yeah, like football never comes without challenges, but yeah. um, it's been it's been really good. It was, it was the best move for me. Yeah, 
And it must be quite the commute if you're going from near Campbelltown to Manly <laughs> for training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Campbelltown <laughs> to Manly every day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm a Westie. I like staying out west. Yeah. Um, my little boys, um, all their cousins and, and aunties and uncles are all out west. So I don't mind the commute. I listen nice. to podcasts, um, listen to some audio books and, and things like that. Um, catch up with people on the phone, nice. catch up with my New Zealand family. That makes the drive pretty easy. Well, hopefully you'll be listening to this podcast on some yeah, <laughs> some yeah, drives yeah, up, soon, no pressure. Soon. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and, and so any, how do you how do you feel, manly are headed, um, especially coming into to next season now? Actually, really confident. I feel I feel that if we're able to keep our best, like um, best eighteen to twenty on the park, injury wise, we'll give it a really good shake. Like we we were able to trouble all the best teams throughout the year. Um, at full strength, like we beat we beat a lot of the the best teams, um, but yeah, we we just had a rough time on injury and like consistency as well. We need to be better consistently. Like all, all teams struggle with that, except for Penrith. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I really feel like we'll, we'll have a good year next year. I'm I'm confident in that. Beautiful. Did Beautiful. you watch that grand final? I did a crazy what a game. grand final. You know when Penrith was down, I was thinking to myself. If anyone brings us back, it'll be these guys. Like uh, I, s- I, I fully just thought to myself, it'll be just like them to come back, and win it? And then they <laughs> did. So like I was, I wasn't even really that surprised. Honestly, I wasn't. Special game. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. The comeback, mm. just Cleary, his greatness on the park. Mm. Anthony and I were talking quite a bit about how impressed we were when Jack Cogger came onto the field. He was good, actually, yeah. He yeah. stabilised the team quite a bit. Yeah. That's what Cleary and said, too, and eh? he set things up mm. for him. Oh, there you go. Cleary said it himself. Yeah. Oh, Cleary said he felt that. like Cogger, mm. Cogger um, opened him up, eh, towards the end. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Um, but I think Croydon. Yeah. How good is he? He's played in every grand final that he's played in in the last four years or whatever he, he scored in. Scored, yeah. And that try was important. Mm. That was an important try. He's a player, man. Yeah. He's a big loss for them. So we're hoping that Croydon's going to take the Bulldogs to a grand final eventually. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that would be nice. We're, bu- we're Bulldogs of projects. Of course, yeah. man lives. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so That's we're, it. We're, we're, um, we're happy that we've got Croydon, but you, you just, not to take the spotlight off Penrith, what, uh, just another season, a three-peat. Yeah. And, I mean, you playing at the highest level of the game for the years that you have, it's hard enough to lo- lace up your boots every week and just mm. get out there and give 100%. Yeah. But for them to have performed and to make grand finals four in a row and to have won three in a row, mm. that, that's that's a special team. Maybe the best team ever. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Where are you on the Nathan Cleary goat debate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he has to be. He has to be, yeah. He's right yeah. up there, yeah. I big call, so. big call. There I think go. so. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. I can't fold him, mate. He's so good. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we've <laughs> come to this point in our in our show that everyone looks forward to <laughs> each and every week. Each and every week, and we're so honoured to have Josh here with us for it. And it is now time for Father Ben's big hit of the week. <laughs> and now sponsored by. Oh, I always forget, eh? It's okay. That's why I'm here. Remind you. Thank you. Thank you. Sadly, <laughs> this segment is still sponsored by absolutely nobody. And it has been for the past few weeks, continues to be, until someone comes in and sponsors the segment. Like promised, all the money from the sponsor <laughs> will be going to a charity which we will disclose once a sponsor is found. God bless. Thank you for listening again. Wonderful, all right, so wonderful. <laughs> So we have a special one this I week. I hope we don't have a sponsor for a very long time if it means you're going to do that every week. <laughs> I appreciate that. Listen. Maybe listen. that's why. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll change it up, okay? I promise yeah. I'll keep it going if you like it <laughs> and if we get a sponsor. No, um, we, we do have a special one this week and it involves a, a special person that's sitting in this room. Um, and well, it's it, wasn't, not, it wasn't Sarah. No, it definitely, definitely wasn't Sarah, <laughs> though she has had her, had her share of big hits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, so it's a it's a special one. We're going to play it for you. Um, actually, funnily enough, it, it involves um, a, a Papua New Guinean player as well, mm. as we were talking about before. So okay. I'm picking up see. on this now. Let's go. Yeah, let's let's, uh, go. let's show Father Ben the the big hit. 
Olam. Oh, big hit. <laughs> what scripture verse were you quoting in there? Oh. <laughs> it was on it his, him, on his him a bum. <laughs> He's telling him about the Psalms. There he is, Josh, Ola right in Kawatu it. Kawatu and Aloha, wow. <laughs> now, that rarely happens to Olam. Olam's usually the guy doing the big hit. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, so oh, I'll start by saying, like, I have, I have tons of respect for the guy. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he is rock solid. He, he, he'll he run in between anyone. he run it to us, you know, like two guys that, that are willing to, to go hard at him. Um, nah, sometimes in football you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail. I've been the nail a lot of times that time. I was lucky <laughs> enough to be the hammer. So, um, yeah, we, we got him good and I won't be surprised when um, – Olam gets me back real soon. <laughs> Fair. You gave him a bit of a mouthful there. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> no, we love it. We love the passion, man. That's, that's the best part. We, we were hit. reviewing the hit from the grand final last week, some of the contact that was uh, happening, and we just love it how you boys just bash each other on the field. And when someone comes off a big hit, they get up and they smile and like, yeah, yeah let's yeah, keep it yeah. up. Let's go, let's go. That's like smiling, but you're actually upset. And you're like, I'm going to get you back. <laughs> but we love that. Oh, we love that. Let's change gears a little bit now. Um, as a young man growing up, I'm sure your love for the footy and then representing your country and then signing contracts with NRL clubs, you just... When you're in that space, you want to be known for football. Mm. Yeah? You want mm. to be known for football. Um, you just want to play the game you love. And you want to walk, run out onto that park every week and just play footy. Yeah. And I think that's what's so attractive about sport for us is that it helps us, it entertains us, we support our teams, and we use it as something to kind of switch off. But a couple of years back, um, you and a few other players came into some prominence in the media... Um, by standing up for your religious beliefs and choosing not to wear a jersey that supported the um, the, the gay ideology or the um, and, and that was that was a really tough time. I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I want you to tell us what happened in that moment. Yeah, I'm pretty happy to talk about it all, like we kind of mentioned. Um, you know, I think uh, like I foresee this chat getting pretty deep, so. I think it's important to to premise that, like, as a Christian, um, I don't profess to to have it all together. To um, to I don't take these stances from from a self righteous point of view, but at the same time, um, it's important to be virtuous, um, to have things that you stand for. To and and when I speak of that, there, there's certain hills in, in in my faith and in my belief that I would die on. And, and my faith in general is something that I would die for. So, um, yeah, when I was put in the position to, to wear the pride jersey, um, the whole LGB uh, flag and, and ideology and everything they stand for goes against everything I believe in. Um, so I can't in good conscience, as a man, as a man of faith, um, I couldn't wear it, regardless of, of the repercussions, regardless of the outcry, um, regardless of the offence. Um, and you know it's it's not hateful to do that. It's not hateful to stand for for what I believe in. We quietly took a stance against it, and um, I don't regret any of it. You spoke earlier, and I've just made this connection now. When when you lost your father, and you gave it all to God, and you said, "God, if NRL is something you want me to do, mm. open up some doors for me. But if it's not something you want me to do, then that's fine too." Yeah. And so you've been very consistent with the fact that whilst N the NRL and football has given you so many blessings, it is not the be-all and end-all of your life. Yeah. You might be a player for the Manly Seagulls, but you're a man of God first. Yeah, I'm actually happy you said that. You know, like it's, it's, um, it's a dangerous trap to start seeking God and, and worshipping God for, for what he can give you uh, and not for who he is. Um, being people that are chasing after his, his hand before you're chasing after his heart, um, that's very dangerous. Um, and then uh, with that, it's like, where, where's my identity? Is my identity in being a, a football player first, or is it in being a, a son of God, a, 
um, a Christian, um, a man of God, um, where's your identity lie? Mm. And you have to start asking all those kind of questions when you're put in a compromising position like this. Mm. Um, can I, as a, as a man of God, wear something that I know upsets him? Um, can I go against my beliefs and just, and just compromise? Um, those are all the things that I had to consider um, when we took our stance. Mm. And you mentioned identity, mm. and this is one of the things that's pushed so hard that people have fallen into the trap that your sexual orientation or the gender that mm. that you um, uh, identify as and things like that, mm. that's your, that is your identity. Mm. And so many people have fallen into that trap. Yeah. Um, but like you mentioned, your identity is actually, and, and all of our identity is actually in God. It's in our creator. Yeah. Our identity at, at its deepest, at its core, is that we're a son or a daughter of God. Yeah. And it doesn't go... Uh, it, every other um, thing in our life, the fact that I'm Lebanese, that I'm a man, yeah. things like that, it makes up the person I am, yeah. but it's not my deepest identity. That's it. That's in God. It's in the Creator. And that's why you find so many people who have everything that the world tells you that you need to be happy, yeah. and they're still unhappy. They're still searching for something. It's because they, mm. they have no idea of their own identity because they don't know God. Um, and so... Because of that trap, when you take a stance against something like the LGBT community mm. um, and their ide ideologies, you become someone who hates the person. That's right. Yeah. So, what, what do you what do you have to say about that? Because because you were mm. you were attacked quite a bit about that about being a hate, and we all are when we take a stance against it. Yeah. Um, but obviously, as a as a public figure, yeah. um, do you do you hate? <laughs> do you hate them? Do you, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly wh what you're saying with that. Um, um, I guess I'll I'll start by saying. I guess I'll I'll start by saying that growing up, do you remember back in the day where where young kids, uh, whether boy or girl, used to be encouraged? It used to be applauded to be people that stand for things that they believe in, be virtuous, be strong, be uncompromising. They used to be uh, applauded. They used to be encouraged in our communities. And now, for some reason, it's gone the whole opposite way. If you're not supporting the agendas that are being pushed, if you're not compromising your beliefs, you're hateful. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's, gone, it's gone a full 360. And I'm not going to fall into the trap. And, I, uh, and I'm very vocal about this. I'm not going to fall into the trap of um, if you're standing for that, then you hate that lot of people because it's not. You know, yeah. like, as I, as I premised before we started the chat, you can stand for the things you believe in and not be hateful. You can stand for the things you believe in and still be loving and not discriminative. And, like, I felt like we done that. that that's all that we done. Yeah. And like you said, um, in terms of identity, um, and they want us to wear the rainbow flag. Like, if you want to delve deeper into it, um, they've taken a symbol from the Bible in, in Genesis, and they've used that. As, as their flag, and they've, they've kind of taken the piss out of something that means so much to us as Christians, God's promise, you know, they're using that as their flag. They're talking about, like, gender ideology. You can identify however you want. Yeah. It goes against everything that we, we know. It's, it's just like the world's losing its mind. Yeah. You can identify as a cat. You've got guys identifying as females and going smashing girls' sports. Like, yeah. where do we draw the line? Because yeah. it's going to get crazier and crazier. And people are worried about speaking out like this because if you do speak out against the crazy left, like you're a good chance of getting cancelled. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not worried about it because when I make my stance, I know I'm not saying I hate you and I've got it all together, so I'm making the stance because I'm self righteous. Yeah. And I know I'm making making this stance for God. We need to like stand firm, like it says in the word. And I'm not worried about the outcry. You mentioned um before, like if you're not being persecuted, you're probably not making a stand for God. Like, that's right. if you're people pleasing, then great, they will pat you on the back. <laughs> well, that's all right. God won't pat you on the back. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd much, much rather, um, uh, is it Timothy? Or it speaks about the New Testament. Like, the approval of God is, is much more important to me than the approval of man. So, Amen. yeah, everything that, that that flag represents, I couldn't, um, in good conscience, um, wear that and endorse that and encourage that. So how was that 
thrust upon you as players? Like, what what actually happened? Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah. So we just um, we we weren't given much notice. We were probably only given seven days, ten days notice actually to um, that we we're going to wear a jersey with the pride flag on it. And like, I immediately rang up my coach, and it was Des Hasler at the time, a man that I, I I really respect and love even to this day. And I told him, hey, you you know I can't wear that. And he said, yep, I understand. And then a few of the other boys found out about it, and they were like, look, I'm not comfortable wearing it too. So then we got chatting. Um, there was a bit of an emergency meeting in the boardroom, and um, they kind of kind of pitched to us what, what they see, uh, that symbol representing on our jersey. Um, and they said, hey, we want to give you guys 24 hours to think about it. And in the boardroom, like, we kind of said to the boys, hey, you guys make all your decision for yourself. Don't be influenced by each other. Don't feel like we have to p- pack mentality this. Come to peace with your decision. I said, like, I don't need 24 hours. Like, my, my mind's made up. I'm not playing. Um, I won't play in that jersey. We, we had some alternatives that we tried to work. We, for whatever reason, we couldn't get other jerseys organised. Um, so I said, yeah, look, I don't need 24 hours. Um, my mind's made up. One of the other boys, um, he said the same thing. His mind's made up, and I think... Once the boys had a good think about it, they um, they were on the same page. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And there was a uh, there was a potential debutant mm. that round two, and he put God before mm. his opportunity to play first grade. Yeah, that's that's something I really like to talk about too. Actually, um, I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning him. Um, Ray Vainga, um, he was called in to replace one of us seven who were. Uh, pulled out of the game. He hadn't played NRL yet. So he's a young boy from West Auckland. He went to the same high school as me in West Auckland. Um, you know, had a had a rough upbringing as well, you know, to be fair. Um, like I said earlier, it's pretty hard to make that out of there and have the opportunity to be doing what we're doing. And he got given his NRL debut that week. And he turned it down and put God first. And I told Ray, I said, man, I have that much respect for you. Like, even just talking about it now, like, mm. he turned down his dream, everything he worked for, what he moved over to Australia for. He left his family in New Zealand to, to pursue this, and he still put God first. Man, so much love for Ray, so much respect for him. Um, I love that that staunchness in the spirit. Like These days we need that. Yeah. And you it's hear amazing. often times about people doing whatever it takes to climb the ladder of success. Mm. And then you've got you fine young men who... As you said before, this isn't an issue of hate, mm. but that's what unfortunately the mainstream media turned it into. You, I know you love your brothers and sisters mm. because that's our commandment from God mm. is to love one another. Yeah. But we can still love one another and have a disagreement. I agree, yeah. And I think we've lost that in our culture today mm. where you and I can just sit across a table from one another mm. and say, you know what, bro, I love you, but I don't agree with this. Yeah. But... That seems to be not acceptable to the mainstream media and the culture, whereby you just have to say yes and affirm everything that someone wants to stand for. Now, you lose yourself as a person. So to that young man who basically sacrificed his opportunity to play in the best league in the world, yeah. Yeah. thanks be to God for his, his fortitude, his strength, his courage. Yeah. Man of God first. Yeah, yeah. And, like, mm-hmm. I'll go on to say, like, he ended up playing in NRL. Uh, you know, God ended up opening that door for him. He had a really good year for us just gone too. He played some really good football, man. Um, so, you know, like, God works um, all things for good for those who love the Lord. Mm-hmm. And Amen. he put God first, and, and I'm just so happy to see how well he's doing now. Um, through challenge and adversity, man, I'm, I'm real proud of him. That's awesome, man. And like you said, God always provides, man. That's, that's amazing. What was the reaction within your team? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, um, it, it feels like there's a real cultural misunderstanding. You have um, our Pacific Islander boys who mostly are from out west, grew up in religious households, grew up in the church of, of some sort. And then you had um, boys from the northern beaches who didn't necessarily grow up in uh, religious households and church um, culturally as well, very, very different. So it was difficult. Like, they definitely didn't understand um, 
Uh, the, like uh, I dare say, like a lot of them were pretty frustrated at us, angry at us. It was an important time of the year for us, um, and it took a lot of pretty robust dialogue for them to understand, um, understand that that's bigger for us than than football. Like, sorry to tell you, like I had to have that conversation with them. Like, oh, sorry, like that's more important to me than like being a teammate to you. To playing for Manly is like is the God factor. Like that's that's much more important to us. And that was pretty hard for them to wrap their heads around. Mm. But, um, you know, in time, uh, there's been a lot of healing that's taken place since. Um, I feel like, in a way, we got a lot closer in the new year. Um, our coach actually done a really good job of bringing us together. Um, Seabold, when he come in, it's been a lot more time together. Um, people understood each other a lot better. So it was very challenging at the time. Yep, there's a bit of disunity as well probably to be fair um but we're in a much better place now and i suppose that's that's the tension that can be caused when you get a big corporation or a company that just makes a decision across the board that says Mm -hmm. we are going to stand for this and it may not necessarily represent your views so like you said a person can have an opinion but when a company or an organisation imposes an opinion yep. on a group of players that don't share those values, mm. then that becomes really, really difficult. No one was ever saying, okay, if NRL players want to respectively support that particular ideology, then as individuals you can. Yeah, that's right. No one's saying that they can't, but when a club does it, it has repercussions because... Yeah. It affects men of faith like yourself. That's right. There definitely needed to be better dialogue. There definitely needed to be uh, more planning and conversation around it. And like I said, um, for a lot of people, that um, culturally, they just wouldn't have realised it was an issue. Um, understanding, like, you know, for the most part, it was mostly Polynesian boys who grew up in the church um, and, and are walking with God in some capacity. Um, they just wouldn't understand that that would have been an issue. But um, the thing is, uh, for them, their God is football, a lot of these these people. like th- That's the be-all and end-all, and that's the biggest thing. Live, breathe football, football's first. So for them to say, like, are you guys saying, like, football's not first for you? It's kind of hard for them to wrap their head around. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, that's what we're saying. And I think that that's yeah. a very mature understanding on your end, mm, mm. is to acknowledge that, as as God's creation, we're all very different people. Yeah. And yeah. there are going to be some people out there that would have just said, well, mate, just wear the jersey. Like, wear the jersey and go out and play footy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the type of person that'll, that'll say, yeah, it is footy. That's mm. all it is. Mm, mm. But you guys stood for something a lot deeper and you stood for honouring God first. Mm. In a very similar vein, Anthony and I have been speaking about this over the last four weeks. We love the public display of faith that some players mm. participate in mm. at the end of a game. So we saw it at the end of the, the Penrith-Melbourne game yeah, yeah. where a group of them, even Melbourne de, uh, in defeat, yeah, yeah. a few of the boys went over to the Penrith players and in a circle they all took a knee and said a prayer. Yeah, yeah. That's not a club imposing that on any of them. That's, right, that's yeah. them doing what they're doing. And that's not you boys telling all of your teammates, you must pray with us. That's right, yeah. eh? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah in, in the same capacity, like, um, I believe that we should have freedom and liberty. So if there was an Easter round and it had a jersey with Jesus on the cross, I wouldn't expect my atheist teammates to wear that jersey. I think that's unfair on them. Because I'm pushing my Christian ideology and beliefs on them. And God's given us the liberty to believe or to not believe or to follow or to not follow. And if my atheist teammates were to take a stand against that jersey, I would say, absolutely fair, that shouldn't be pushed on you. So it's the very sa- same, yes. the shoe's just on the other foot. It's a very good yeah. point. So yeah. that's, that's um, I, f- I think that's a fair analogy. Mm. And the fact that you guys may have even grown closer because of this, because you were able to have conversations mm. after the whole incident, I guess shows that if if one side was um, a little bit more understanding, I mm. guess, or, or accepting of the other side, then 
we would be able to come together a lot more and find some unity, yeah. you know, in, in the public space, not just <laughs> in no, a team. No, I agree. Like, <laughs> but, like, in, in all honesty, like, things got ugly before they got better. Yeah. And um, even in terms of, like, how I deal with conflict, like, could have been better. I probably could have been worse, but I could have been better. Um, at times, let my emotions get the better of me. Um, was angry and frustrated at teammates that were giving us a hard time. Um, didn't want to go about things the right way because I was fed up. Like the hu- all the human aspects of emotion, anger, and all that. Yeah, that that um, got the better of me at times. Like I'm not going to act like I dealt with that whole situation perfectly. I was getting hammered by the media. I was getting hassled everywhere. Then I felt like my teammates were turning on me. Yeah. I was kind of in fight or flight mode, and sometimes I was just choosing fight on all ends. And um, but it was a it was a really good learning experience. Yeah. And did did the NRL or the club impose any kind of, um, I suppose, punishment, if you want to call it that, on what no. you did? Or was it just they respected the fact that you would just stand down for that round? Yeah, yeah, they did. They, they um, I would say Des, Des understood where we were coming from. Um, when he signed me to come to Manly, he knew the man that he was signing, which I'm, I'm grateful of, and he was very supportive of us boys. And that put him in a real hard situation, um, you know, because Dez had nothing to do with the jersey, so it was quite difficult for him. Um, so I've got all the love and the respect in the world for Dez. Um, he supported us through it, um, but yeah, it was it was it was put him in a difficult position too. Yeah. Well, um, I I did some research into a few articles and things. I remember reading all the articles and thinking these would be positive yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. um but i i remember thinking as well like we haven't heard enough from the players mm. and, and i don't think you guys were given much of a voice mm. um I, I found the 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 rare sort of article that that wasn't published too mm. uh, yep. <laughs> too much in mainstream media um uh, of your responses but we want to give you the opportunity now mm. just to respond to some things that, that were in articles and um, some of the things that people have been saying yep. about you So uh, from this incident. So um, we have Fox Sports reported that you guys uh, and a couple others reported that you guys may be willing to wear the jersey if they did another or a similar pride sort of jersey again. Is that, is that Oh, true? I actually heard that at the time. Yeah, no, that was rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was I was actually pretty surprised that they, that they they brought that out. I think at that stage they were trying to weaken our stance a little bit, yeah, um, and create a little bit of disunity even even in our group. Yeah, but um, no, nah, no, nah, we I'll take the same stance next year, the year after, and forevermore. So I think the other boys are the same. I think over time, like we've even seen the ripple effect of you know standing for our beliefs and things like that which has been super positive. Mm. And um, no, nah, that, that was just, that was false altogether. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, no. Nah. Cool, cool. Mm. And, and, and on that, this is so important, is that people read headlines these days mm. and the headline is the truth to them. That's mm-hmm. it. That makes up their thought process now, what they've read in the headline. Yeah. And so even if the story is completely different from the headline or if the headline's completely untrue mm. altogether, it becomes people's belief. Mm. They don't look into it. They don't research. They let these headlines and other journalists and mainstream media do the thinking for them. And Especially if they see enough of them. Yes, That's exactly right. right. They, they flood you with the same thing. Yeah, and th- they're loud and persistent. And this is so important, is that something like this is completely untrue. Mm. No, none, of, none of you boys said you were going to play in the jersey again. But, right. but it was something circulating in media mm. and all the headlines were saying, oh, they said they'd play again. And so as someone who's studying journalism and, and working a little bit in it, it's so important to understand for the beautiful internet people, as mm. Father Ben always says. You're stealing my lines. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm borrowing them. Um, it's so important to actually do some some thinking for yourself, some digging, some researching, because once we get to the crux of these issues, we, and this isn't just a bias thing or because I'm a Christian, I'm saying this, I'm saying I became a a devout Christian, I would like to think, or a practicing one, Mm. 
because I did enough digging. And you get to these truths, these values, these, um, uh, these morals, when you do enough digging because they make sense, they're natural. They're That's right. Like I'll, I'll interject by supporting what you're saying and, and say that it's really important that, that you do think for yourself. Yeah. Like if you look at mainstream media today, it's very heavily swayed by the left. Yeah. And what is the left? The, the left at the moment, if we're being honest, has got a huge attack on, on religious freedom, on belief, on free speech. Family. Why is it so? The, the family unit, um, a man's role, a woman's role. What is a woman? Yeah. Answer it for me on the left, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> all of that stuff. All yeah. of that stuff. Like if you look at all the agendas being pushed, they've taken pretty much everything we believe in, flipped it upside down, and they're flooding mainstream media with it. So yeah. think for yourself, be mindful that um, there's always agendas being pushed. Yeah. Um, and most of all, like if you're not like if you're not reading your word, if you don't know what the word says and you're just getting flooded by media, man, that's gonna that's gonna influence your thoughts more than what um, God's word is or, or God's principles, etc. Yeah. You know what you just said, Josh? It, it's also, it's not just what we as Christians believe. It's what our entire creation has believed mm. yeah. since for the all very of history. beginning <laughs> for all of history yeah, up yeah. until about five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> exactly. so true. Yeah, I couldn't so, agree with you more. I mean, yeah. you just, it's, I it's logical. More. But I, I think what we have to really also do is, is remind people, as you said earlier, and Anthony, you alluded to this, we as Christians... We see our brother and our sister. So it was very unfair for the media and people that supported the media mm. to define you, Josh, as a headline mm. yeah. for the decision you made. Mm. You're a young man who's just trying your best. Mm. You don't hate anyone in this world. Mm -hmm. You love your fellow brothers and sisters. Mm. And that, I think, is the beauty of Christianity. We've been told, look to the person and love the person in their entirety. Don't just look at them for one thing. You don't say, my name's Josh, I'm a football player. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, you're not being defined by that. Yeah. But when, as you said, Anthony, when people start boxing themselves in to certain categories and that's all their definition and their worth and their identity is, right. the moment that that is opposed or challenged, it's World War Three. Yeah. Mm. And so we want to reiterate that, no, we, we love... You might see just a small part of yourself. We see all of you. That's right. We see your wholeness. We see you as a person and we love you. Yeah. But loving, as we've seen Jesus do, loving doesn't mean affirming you in everything. Amen. Loving you is saying, you know what, I do love you, but I don't agree with this. Mm. Think about everyone that ever had an encounter with Jesus. Mm. Did they ever leave the same way they came? They were always transformed by his love and he challenged people. And that is something the world is very uncomfortable with today yeah. is that Jesus reveals to us the truth about ourselves and we walk away from that encounter either changed or we put up a brick wall and say, nah, and I'm out of here. Mm. And for those that put up the brick wall and say, nah, I'm out of here, he wants to give you so much more. He wants to love you. He wants to show you who you are as a person and he wants you to see the good in other people. We're not out there trying to make people unhappy. We're not out there to discriminate against people. We're there to love our brothers and sisters. That's what all this has always been about. Yeah. But unfortunately, people can't see that. Yeah, and, and love, as Thomas Aquinas defined it, is to will the good of the other. Mm. And that's, uh, I think, the best definition you could probably give it and if we're going to will the good of another person it means that if they're doing something wrong they need to know about it mm -hmm. and so it's like like if, you know if your son uh, as as a child went to um, touch like a hot stove this is a classic example yeah. went to touch a hot stove and you go oh because i love you i'm going to affirm you in this yeah go and touch <laughs> the hot stove it's good for you <laughs> But I was about to use the same example oh, like with go. my sons. Yeah, yeah, you beat me to the punch. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Go for no, it, no, no, I'd love for you exactly to say. <laughs> no, no, exactly what you're saying. Like, um, yeah, you, if if you, if I if I really love my sons, I'm not gonna let let them go and do whatever they want, whenever they want, and affirm it. 
or they're going to grow up to be horrible young men. They're going to grow up to be horrible husbands, horrible friends, horrible dads, if it gets to that. Because I've just affirmed them in everything they want to do their whole lives. You know what I mean? But, like, if I discipline them and try and, and like, even discipline them in the word, e- everything, then hopefully they they will grow up with uh, virtuous that have good morals and good standards. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly what you said. No, I couldn't agree more. Amen, amen. Um, all right, we'll we'll uh, move on to the to the next, I guess, accusation if you <laughs> if you're gonna <laughs> call it that. There, there was an opinion piece that I read, written uh, in the Western Weekender, and this was pretty. Uh, opinion pieces can be really uh, really harsh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and so you've um, had your fair share of those. Oh, yeah. I'm tired. I'm used to it now. Eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it. That's it. But um, but but I want to read a, a couple. Actually, a few things I read from this just from this piece i was like okay it kind of sums up a lot of what i was reading anyway just send me the guy's name too <laughs> yeah. and his address nah. <laughs> to, to pray for him of course he's like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i love it love it um, okay so this is this is what the first thing i read in it um, that that i thought was worth putting in here he says this the players hiding behind religious and cultural beliefs as the reason for not running out on the field and doing their job on Thursday night just doesn't wash. Nobody is asking the players to be gay. Nobody is suggesting wearing a jersey with a rainbow stripe on it makes them gay. So this almost seems irrelevant to even talk about because it's such an absurd (laughs) (laughs) statement. But for those who who hold this uh, belief that it doesn't make you gay, Mm -hmm. so why not wear the jersey? Is that what it was about to you, being not being gay? I think we'll be touching on um, things that we've already touched on. What does what does the LGB uh, mm. rainbow flag represent? Yeah, it, refle- it reflects you know um, gender ideology. Uh, you can identify however you want. Um, the misconstrued marriage which God created uh, for man and woman, and they've they've made it into something that um, God is not pleased with. Um, or the gender ideology things. Young kids are now without parental consent overseas going and getting um, their private parts changed surgically. Mm. They're never able to um, get a change back or they're never going to be the same even if they do. So that's what that represents. It represents like a, like a godless a godless community. So it's what they're saying is go out and endorse everything that you don't believe in and everything that that goes against what you do believe in. Mm. Like how how can you go out and do that? I, I don't I don't understand how they think that that that'd just be okay. Oh, it's just it's just this. It's just that. Yeah, everything's just if you put put just before it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, uh, as I was saying, like uh, that it represents too much. Um, that goes against what we believe in. It's it's pretty simple. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. And I think that speaks also to uh, an important point because I, w- I think what this person is getting to is um, just do it and uh, do what you're told. But what they might be overseeing here is what we in our Christian tradition call the sin of scandal. Mm-hmm. So what we mean by that is if you were to run out in that jersey, all of your community back home, your family members, everyone mm-hmm. be like, well, hold on a second. He says yep. something and he yeah. does another thing. Yeah, that's that's a hypocrite. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm happy you said that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very happy you said that. No, I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah, I didn't even need to elaborate on it. That's true. That's mm. true. You know, like my my church community or my family and and things like that would be like, oh, how come, how come you're being a people pleaser and compromising on your faith? Like you say your faith is the most important thing to you, and then your your work tells you to do this and you just do it. Like, so really, God is. Football is your God, and then it's, what's the order for you? Is it God football, or is it is it football God? Mm. Um, no, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's easy to it's easy to say, oh, it's God, then football, mm. or it's God, then whatever, for, for anyone watching and for yeah. us. But then when it comes time to show it, yeah, and yeah. to put mm. football on the line or our jobs on the line, yeah. then... Uh, the true, the truth comes oh, out. Well, you what get do we put the first? Then mm. you know yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, that this was a hill I was willing to die on. If it meant I wasn't going to play another NRL game again, 
then so be it. You know, I was. Um, that's a hell I'll die on uh, for my faith. Mate. God bless your courage. Yeah, amazing, mm. awesome man. All right, then we've got um, the, the the same same opinion piece, and it says th- this one I think is is really interesting in your case, and <laughs> and the ignorance really stands out here. Mm. Um, it says these players are completely unimpacted by the struggles and challenges that people in the gay community face. They likely haven't done an ounce of research or even tried to understand the plight of the LGBTQI plus community. Now, I know in your case, mm. this definitely is not the case. <laughs> yeah. um, do you want to speak a little bit into that? Oh, as I mentioned with the flag, you know, it's, 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 um, it's biblical, first of all. A lot of them wouldn't even know that, you know, from the LGB community that they've taken that something from the Bible in Genesis that they're using using to promote their ideologies. Um, oh, it's not a lack of research. I knew exactly what I was doing and, and the reasons behind it. Um, in terms of what was it they said um, that we don't understand their challenges and things like that. It really just has n- like it has nothing to do with us. And what they're saying is that because we're making the stance, we're being discriminative and we're hating on them. Which is not the case. Like I have family members, one of them being my sister, who I'm incredibly close with. Like I love her to bits. You know what I mean? Um, you know, if if I needed to, I would lay my life down for her. The same I would lay down my life for my other brother or my other little sister. So um, it's not hateful. Um, we're just as loving as everyone else, but we, you know, we're, we're taking a stance. Mm. Yeah. So your your sister has same sex attraction. Yep, yeah, yeah, in a relationship currently too. Yeah. But you, you love her. You see the, you see her whole person. Yeah, absolutely. She's your yeah, sister. Yeah, She's yeah, blood. You're always yeah. gonna love her. Yeah, yeah. But you too, I'm sure, can respectfully disagree about mm. the lifestyles that you're living. Yeah, and she, she understood the stance that I took. She said, like, you guys shouldn't be forced into doing that. Like, as long as she's known me, like, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian, and, um, she, she was fine with it. I touched base with her, and I said to her, like, oh, look, I know everything's getting hectic. Um, with the media and she's like oh don't worry about it she's like you know you don't need to come to me like mm. we're close our relationship's fine none of this impacted our relationship whatsoever mm. so um yeah yeah um it's easy it's um the the left are really attacking uh, attacking our religious freedom by saying you know every time you take a stance it's hate whenever you speak up for your faith it's hate speech mm. whenever you take a stance it's discriminative Whenever you have an uh, open dialogue, you, you're, you're a bigot or you're a homophobe. Like you were saying, like you can't have open dialogue nowadays. It's way more difficult mm. to sit down and have a debate and disagree mm. and shake hands and walk away. Like, and I know, think, yeah. I do, and I think one of the main things that you've highlighted there is that you have a relationship with your sister. Mm. You love your sister, mm. okay? So when someone reads a headline about you, mm. immediately homophobe, homophobe mm. bigot um hater um but the reality is this if you get to sit down with anyone mm. and show them that you're generally interested in them and that you love them mm. it's a lot easier to have a dialogue yeah. than yeah. it is to make a judgment which mm. i'm it's pretty poor on society's end to make a judgment on a young man like yourself a fine God-fearing man like yourself who's doing your best for your own family, to love your children, to pray, mm. to represent your community, it's pretty poor on society's end to judge you for that one thing without knowing you as a person. Mm. And, and this is the whole thing when they always throw this in a Christian's face. Mm. Oh, don't judge. Yeah. Don't judge. Yeah. <laughs> and no, we're, we're not judging just because we disagree with you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, And so that, I think, you speak to something very important there, and that's the importance of relationships. We need to spend time with the person, heart to heart. Let them know we love them. Mm. Let them know that I'm struggling the way you're struggling. Yeah, We're all just battling different things. We're all right? doing, yeah. yeah, we're all struggling. You know, like, the, the, the struggles that they have, like, uh, I'm fighting my own struggles. I'm failing in my own struggles as well like i'm not up here saying i've got it all together and that i'm perfect and i'm better than you you know what i mean like i'm fighting the good fight and losing plenty of rounds along the way and getting knocked down you know so um no it's important that that you say that because 
it's pretty quick for for them to say like, oh, look at these self righteous bunch of guys that are looking down on this community, are hating on this community. When um, it's really not like that at all. And that's the attempt. Getting back to the identity thing, that's the attempt that they 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 try and remove your humanity mm. by identifying you with this decision that you made mm, mm. so that people can forget that you're another person with these battles with these yeah, struggles right. you know you you might i don't know get a little bit impatient with your son every now and then just like anyone yeah, else yeah. would um that's the attempt that they got that they sorry that's the thing that they're going for is to remove your hum- humanity so that people aren't looking mm. at who you are mm. like who who is the guy behind this decision um funny you bring that up because a few weeks ago we were speaking pre-show about that amazing story of the abdullah family and if we know what happened there a few years ago but danny and layla chose not to define this man samuel davidson by the sin the act of killing their children and a lot of people even in our comments and feedback have been you're the strongest couple. We could never do that. We could never forgive. We could never. Yeah. But look at what Danny did and and similarly what Layla did. They look to the humanity of Samuel Davidson mm. and say, okay, something has happened here that is tragic. It has changed our lives forever. But they chose to look at him as another person. Mm. And because they looked at his humanity, they have been able to forgive him. Yeah, see, that's, that's even amazing to me. Like when you talk about it, like I'll be real honest. To even comprehend like the level of their spiritual maturity in terms of their forgiveness and battling their grief and how they've moved through it, like I can't help but just like say one like they're they're really special people and they must have like a really deep level of spiritual maturity. And two, you're right, like I can't comprehend that. Like my love for my two boys, if anything happened to them, like I'll go crazy. Like I like me just that's just me being honest. Like I couldn't comprehend how they're dealing with it. So, like, I'm not saying they've dealt with it easy because it's probably been the hardest thing ever, but um, their spiritual maturity through it, like, I can't comprehend it. Like, uh, that's amazing, yeah. And I thank you for your vulnerability in saying that you might not even be able to to do that. But here's the challenge in the Christian life. You speak about spiritual maturity. Yeah. Just like you train every off-season to get stronger, to be fit, to be primed and ready to go, the spiritual life is like that. Yeah. We can't take a day off in the spiritual life. Yeah, We've right. got to give thanks to God all the time. We've got to be communicating with our Savior. We've got to be praying mm. and, and embracing what comes our way, mm. knowing mm. that even if it's the harshest of tragedies, God is always by our side. Mm. And so that is for all of us. No one gets a hall pass on that. Mm. All of us are encouraged each and every day to grow in our faith, to open up the word of God, to read the scriptures and see how God is speaking to us. Mm. And then when that day comes, if it comes, if there is a tragedy, please God, we have the strength to to pull through and be able to deal with it with his help. You know what? I think we're going to endorse you as our third um, host of the show. That's what I said. You've got, got I have to say this, you've got an amazing feel for where the Spirit's taking us in this. Um, And for those watching at home, yeah, we prepare our show and we do notes and we do all that kind of thing. But sometimes we just, we freestyle. We're free-rolled a lot of the day, really. Yeah, Yeah. we're we're rolling with things. And I think that's a really beautiful thing that we've done. Mm. And I suppose what I'd probably say, um, we've spoken about that enough, but there are many things in our journey of faith that we're called to do as followers of God. Mm. So... Talk to us about your spirituality a little bit. Like, how do you how do you live out what the scriptures ask you to do? Um, you said you're a father. You've got kids. Yep. Um, are you doing anything with your local church? Yep. Are there any initiatives like you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I think my my most important ministry starts at home with my two boys, uh, making sure that uh, they have good um, God fearing men around them, and the first one has to be their father. Um, you know, I have to to uphold a standard that they can look to, but also know that like um, that I'm looking to God, so I need to just point them, point them to God. Make sure they've got um, good men around them at church, 
uh, I, I just really feel like I've got boys, so I can only testify to having boys. And what I, I, I feel is really important is just having really God, uh, strong, God-fearing men around them, making sure they're, um, they're in church, they're in, in the house of God, um, and then learning how to pray at home. Yeah, that's important. Um, something I need to be better at is like I definitely should. My boys are young, uh, three and ten months, so um, probably need to find ways to get into the Word with them somehow, which I need to be better at, and but also spend a lot more time praying for them. But try pray with my boys, and like I said, the most important ministry for me is, is at home at the moment. Mate, there is nothing more powerful than for a young child to see their mother and father on their knees in prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. even if they don't know what's going on. They, they get it in here. Like there is yeah. something bigger than all of us right now. And mum and dad on their knees are humbling themselves mm. and giving thanks and glory to God. And that is the most powerful witness you can give them because they will hold on to that for the rest of their life. Yeah, even just you mentioning it is, is encouraging me to, to be a lot better in that. So, yeah, that's something I'll take away too. Like I really want to um, step up my prayer game with my boys. I think that's really important, I think. Amazing. And there's a there's a book I I've read actually, Father Ben got it for me for my um for my twenty first birthday, and um it's on fatherhood. It's yep. seven seven secrets to being a father on uh, sorry a father on earth mm. like the father in heaven. That's what the book is, and I remember reading okay. it, and it talks about um how much an an earthly father has an impact on on his kids, mm-hmm. and to the point where it becomes harder for a child to comprehend a loving heavenly father yep. if they don't have a loving earthly father in their life. Mm. And and fatherhood is something that's also under attack um, in, in society 100%, now. Yep. Um, manhood, yeah. fatherhood, as much as the society isn't ready to talk about it, um, it's the truth, it, is that it's under attack. And if we're faithful, um, loving fathers and men of God, it becomes easier for those, even, even not you... If they're not your own kids, but people who look up to you, they can as a father figure. Mm, mm. It becomes easier for them to understand. Well, if this father figure in my life, or if my father is so loving, mm. my earthly father, it becomes easier to comprehend mm. a loving heavenly father. Mm. And it, it's that's just one tiny impact that that has. So that's awesome, man. That you're you're focusing yeah, on that. Really that yeah. is so powerful. Mm. Uh, one of the things that I was really struck by with you being with us here today is. We just came off um, a cycle of readings over the weekend in the scriptures mm. where we, s- we saw in the prophet Isaiah that there's a person who owns a vineyard mm. and he prepares the vineyard perfectly. And so think about yourself as the owner of your homely vineyard. Yep. You've given your children every single opportunity to flourish in this world. Mm. You've given them a roof over their heads, food on their plates, you give them hugs and kisses, mm. you're, you're praying with them, you're looking after their medical, you're going to pay for their education. You're giving them the perfect conditions to flourish in this mm. world. Yeah. Now, let's transcend that. That's exactly what God has done for you and I as his mm. children. Mm. He's given us the conditions to flourish in this world, mm. not without our trials, yeah. not without things that are going to come our way, mm. but he's given us the best thing possible. And one of the worst things we can do is abuse that. Mm. And that's one of the things that I want our beautiful internet people at home <laughs> and all of us here to really think about and, and process mm. in life. And that is God is the source of all goodness. Mm. And because of that goodness, we can flourish. But it is possible for us to turn our back on that goodness. Yeah. And so I pray that God gives us the strength each and every day to be wise, to be prudent in the way that we approach our lives and the way that we look after the very many gifts that he has given all of us. Mm, mm. That is so important, so, so important. And I just have to say, Josh, you're an impressive young man. Everything you've said today, I can tell, has been from the heart. You have showed courage. You showed generosity by giving us your time here today. And we really, really appreciate that. We are going to continue to pray for your recovery, but we're also going to continue to pray for your journey in faith Mm, mm. and that your young boys become good, fine, God-fearing young men 
um, and that you just keep witnessing to what you're witnessing and ultimately that's the love of Christ. Amen. And we ask that you you also please pray for us <laughs> no, <I> will, <laughs> in bro, our journey. I so, like I was, I was just um, feel really comfortable speaking with you, so like being able to hear your guys' hearts and, and why you're doing this and you you like you just have a real genuine love for God. Um, I would have been pretty happy to walk out otherwise if I didn't think like mm-hmm. he's we're here for the right reasons and uh, I feel like you guys are doing a really good thing. Eh? So ha- I'm happy you've got me on and. Um, yeah, God's been really good to me, um, despite of me. So I'm really grateful. Um, no, thank you. So thank you, bro. Thank you. And look, you're you're our first uh, guest who is an NRL player, <laughs> and we're so honoured and thankful that you've came in. So um, thank you again. We do have, um, if you wouldn't mind, we have our ball here. That's uh, our footy. Oh, that's cool, part of cool, our cool. set. Yep. If you don't mind signing that, of course, that would be. Amazing, sharpie, thank you. I'm sure you've done this plenty of times. Uh, in your yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. This wouldn't be a new experience. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank Champion. You. You thank you. Hold on to that Bye-bye. for a second. Okay. Yeah, we're going to get you to that. hold on to that. Oh, gonna I throw get to a sign the board across. too. <laughs> yeah, so we've got... Okay. What we have here is um, uh, just a canvas with... Oh, you're a legend. Look at that, modelling. <laughs> he, he, truly, he truly is our third host. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Full time, we need... Um, but we do, we have this canvas now. Thank you. So we're making you do a little bit of work now. If if you're able to just um, sign the canvas. Corners. Yeah, at the top corner. Sign and, and name, do you think, underneath? Sign and Look, name. And even, even if a little... A favourite message. Yeah, a little something message. Something scriptural, whatever you want. Something yeah. that speaks to your heart. Ooh, Anything that you're inclined yeah. to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. A scripture, even a message, anything that you want to write. Awesome. This is Use the um, six-year-old handwriting. That's all right, mate. Do you know it's better than mine. I bet you it's better than mine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's some neat handwriting. <laughs> I had to be, I had to get told in school to write neater, so <laughs> it's pretty good. Whatever speaks to you, brother. Whatever speaks to you. Or even something that you go by each and every day as a prayer. Anything you think is going to touch our listeners' hearts. He's got it. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful. (laughs) Matthew 6.33. Now, as a Catholic priest, I should know that (laughs) off the top of my head, (laughs) but I do not. So I'm going to ask Josh, talk to us. What does that mean to you? I'm pretty sure it would be really funny if I got it wrong. <laughs> um, first seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. And all these things will be added unto you. Um, first seeking him, mate. I guess if there was anything, um, if there was any message to come out of today, besides everything else that we've talked about, it would be, yeah, seeking him first, like, regardless of where you are. Like, heaps of, even heaps of times, like, I've fallen into the trap of, like, I need to get this together before I seek him or... You know, my, my life's too messy. My sin's too, like, messy right now to seek him. Just seek him and let him worry about the rest of it. And in partnership and fellowship, you can deal with the rest of it. Mm-hmm. I guess that speaks to me, like, in, in lots of different ways and lots of different seasons, but um, just being able to seek him first, regardless of where you're at. Amazing. Amazing. We appreciate this, man. Thank you so much for signing both. This is special. This it is, is special. We, is. Um, we're going to finish the show now but before we do at the beginning of the show this is the very shirt that anthony's going to take off his back right not now <laughs> yeah and do it for the camera <laughs> no one wants to see, see what's under this push-ups in that <laughs> and no he's gonna, see what's he's, gonna <laughs> he's gonna give this shirt to josh <laughs> as as a thank you josh wanted this shirt he loves it it's got our lord on the cross there as the t against yeah. the grain um we're gonna give with our this logo on the back with our logo on the back we're gonna give this shirt to someone on TikTok, someone on Instagram, and someone on YouTube for liking, subscribing, following, but you must also leave a profound comment, okay? It must be something that you've picked up from the show the last however many five episodes, any of the shorts. We'll filter through it, and we will make the decision as to who gets it, and we'll sort that out. We'll be in contact with you. So that's a beautiful thing, the merch. Um 
please, sorry. Also, just please be assured that we do we do see your comments. We are uh, I, we, we are touched by them. Thank you so much for the support that we've had, even for the the um, th those little um, personal um, testimonies that 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 you've written. We we do see them, um, and even though you know sometimes our, our busy lives can take us away from replying and and liking and things like that. Just be assured that we do see them and, and thank you so much for, for the support and, and we keep you guys in our prayers as well. Beautifully said, Anth. Beautifully said. Thank you. We're going to close this show in prayer now, I think. We're going to give it all to God, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of our lives, for the gift of this day. We thank you for the gift and witness of Josh as a man of God, as a father, and as a role model in our community. We ask that you assist him with his recovery. We pray that you give him the strength to continue witnessing to your name. We also continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in their respective sports who might be overcoming an injury and rehabbing at the moment. And for anyone watching at home who might be going through something difficult right now, Lord God, we ask you send your blessing and healing down upon them. We ask that you give them the strength to overcome those hurdles and to be always reminded that if they are faithful to you, they will enter into the kingdom of heaven. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you all here today. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ says you are the salt of the earth. What good is salt if it loses its flavor? So stay salty. And don't be afraid to go against the grain. Thanks everyone. See God you next bless. time.